Good morning, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. I don't mean to rush this, but this will be a live trade video, but I wanna get my thoughts documented here on USEG with 1860 key upside breakpoint here in pre-market. So there we go, I'm watching 1860 here. And what I did, I just made that alert in my private community. If you're not familiar, I do have a private community. Uh, so made that alert there, wanna get it doc documented, but um, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning, live video. So what do I mean by live? Well, you kind of just experienced it. This is truly live. Everything is playing out in real time. So this is not something that's everything's been recorded. And then I come back and talk about it later. You're getting my raw thoughts, my raw emotions. So yes, like I said, you just saw, if you're looking for like the ultimate professional video uh, in terms of editing and you know, nice script, that's not gonna be this video, but if you're looking for kind of the nitty gritty raw details of what day trading looks like, what it's like to be a day trader, uh, then this video will be for you. Uh, so like I said, 1860 is that level I'm watching here on USEG. Market doesn't open up here still for another 25 minutes, but making a potential move. And at 1860, Let's see if we can get the push up above 19. We can. And all out there for $195. Awesome. In uh, well, let's do the math here on that because you can look here with the nice thing about my broker right here. It shows you the timestamps. So it got in at 906.02, got out at 906.08. So $195 in quite literally six seconds. Now, yes, in hindsight, Coulda, shoulda, woulda made a lot more on it as it kept on going. But for me, I like to just scalp in the pre-market because there can be a lot of uncertainty. Uh, but for mo for uh, members of the community that chose differently, wow, they were doing much better than I am on that one. Again, you saw me type up the alert right at the very beginning of the video. Right there, UA, or USEG, 1860 key upside breakpoint. And that's what I mean by, or you know, that's how the community works. It's not a group of sheep, we are wolves. We work together to point out certain areas, but how you're going to use that area is totally up to you. So in this example, I chose to use that area for a quick scalp. Now, I, I, I was right in the sense of I, I still made money, but I was wrong in the sense of, you know what, for other members, because we all think for ourselves, that said, hey Clay, thanks for that 860 mark. How do I want to use that 860 in my personal trading? For those people that wanted to play it for a little bit more of a, a longer term type trade, as you can see here, I mean, it, it just continues to go. So they are doing much better than what I am, and that is the power of thinking for yourself. That is the power of not wanting to, hey, tell me when to buy, sell, tell me where, you know, no, that's not how trading works. Trading works too fast. It's way too fast, and you can see, there's no way I could ever communicate all that to people, but I just threw out 860. It worked out nicely for me. It worked out much better for people that chose a, a non-scalping method and chose to let the thing work for them, as now it's up, uh, you can see here, approaching the $21 mark. Uh, but that was, like I said, a good real life example of how the community works and the power of being able to think for yourself because people that think for themselves are doing a lot better. And yes, I'm stalling here a little bit because I'm curious to see if this thing pushes up to highs above 2250. Uh, but overall, like I said, market still doesn't technically open up here for 22 minutes. I'm already up just shy of $200. So a nice start to the morning and congratulations to all of you members that uh, took advantage of that alert. All right, the markets are now officially open. Still watching USEG. Not sure I wanna trade it though. I feel like this thing has a very high chance of potentially getting halted. And I just don't feel like getting stuck in a halt. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it though. Tesla actually looking interesting here. Uh, if you do hear a typing, you are not hearing things. Uh, that is the chat room, which you already saw an example of. BYND, wow, it's a very nice move out of the gates here. Just can't, you know, buy or chase anything right now. Oh wow, Tesla totally turned around. Again, all happening during the first minute, but that's why majority of the time I am not trading the first minute. Look at that craziness. That was uh, basically a five dollar range candle. That's uh, that's quite a bit of a range. So Tesla not really giving anything to work with right now. Is this one, oh wow, I, I, I thought this one would have been halted right now, by now, if I'm being 1750. Let's see if we can get a couple more candles to close below 1750. That could be an interesting entry point, but not willing to take it right now. 
Like I said, if the next couple of candles can stay below 1750, that could be uh, become a very interesting area. MYOV. Okay, that's quite interesting, actually. Volume's not super strong, but there we go. What is that low? 17. Let's see if this thing wants to keep on grinding upwards and then come back down to 17. Now Tesla doing the exact opposite. Wow. Tesla all over the place. 4.14.75. 4.14.75. Flush point one minute. So yes, I am just talking out loud to myself and to you as I type. So you can see right here, just as a context of what I've been typing right there, that's 417 or excuse me, 414.75 flush point. But as of now, looking like this thing just is continuing to, to grind upward. So Tesla, needless to say, all over the place this morning. Let's go check on USEG. Oh, there's a the halt. Oh, and there's where it broke, 1750. Bummer. Well, you heard me talking about liking that level. Unfortunately, it didn't really give me enough candles to stay down below it. But then when it did break up through there, there's the official halt. So that one is, wow, Tesla's still going. All right, what is that level? 417, 417. Gonna get that updated here. Edit, update, 417, flush. I'm not sure if the mic's picking it up, but that is my daughter in the background. I'm on daddy duty right now. My other three kids are out with my wife. She said, do you mind if face stays behind? I said, sure. So 417 is a level I'm watching for a potential short if it looks like it wants to break down through that area. So we're watching very, very closely. Well, now 418, but I wanna see it get up there to 419.50 and then get rejected. So 419.50, which is not looking like it, it might not happen. So let's see if it can get up there. Well, maybe it will. We, we maybe can later. Daddy's making a video right now, though, okay? Okay. Yeah, you look with your binoculars for some deer out there. Okay. okay. All right, 417. Still watching that level. I don't want to... All right, nice. So if it looks like it wants to break through 417 on this candle, I will take it. So watching 417 closely here. Very, very stubborn area up around this area, which is why I'm just trying to wait for confirmation because this thing. So let's see if it wants to break on down through. And more so 41725-ish. So let's see. In at 417.41. Hopefully I didn't jump the gun there, but you gotta like this setup. Well, it might not work out. If it goes up over 420, I'll have to get out, but I'm not gonna give up on it quite yet. I mean, I still like this setup. It's just a question of, is this thing ultimately gonna roll back over or not? And get through, whoa, nice. Wow, that happened so fast, I couldn't even take advantage of it. Let's see if it wants to pull back again. Wow, that was a fast move. 
trying to pull out some profits down where I was, but uh oh, <laughs> I might have just missed the move there. Is this thing going to snap back up against me now? All out there for a $44 loss. Um, I'm not quite sure. It still very well may come down there, but uh, I also may have just missed out on the move and this thing might be getting ready to snap back because that was a very fast move, but a very impressive recovery on the bull's part. So I'm not gonna risk that. So I'm just I'm taking the loss there as you saw uh, for the reasons discussed. Even if it comes back down, that's fine, but uh, it made a quick, quick, really fast move all the way down there. And I didn't, I wasn't even able to capture any of it. And that quick bounce back has me a bit worried. Like I said, might still be okay, but I'm not willing to, to risk having this thing bounce up and then have an over $100 loss. So we'll just move on. And I'll, I'll keep an eye on Tesla, see if it does want to pull back down there. But DKNG. Really grinding right now. All right, well, I will go ahead and pause the video. Quick update here on Tesla. Uh, it never did explode to the upside, but it's still just chopping around this general area. Um, 416.50 actually looks relatively interesting here, uh, but I, I would I don't wanna take it on this candle and it looks like it might actually fall on this candle. Uh, but DKNG was also looking interesting, but it's actually pulled back here a little bit. So still some opportunity out there looking like, but just gotta be patient. Another update here on Tesla ultimately has worked out, but uh, I mean, that would have required quite a bit of patience there. Uh, so hindsight, yeah, shouldn't have been spooked out, but that's why it is hindsight. But just wanted to keep you updated on that one since that was a pretty bizarre one. Uh, I still feel as though I played it right because all it would have taken is for that strength to actually been true strength and for the price to continue to beast mode up. And then I would have been looking at a much bigger loss and saying, man, I could, I could only lost right around 50 bucks on it. Uh, but instead, you know, I lost you know, over $100 on it. So hindsight at its finest, but just still want to keep you updated on that one. But yeah, let's see what else is out there. Have an order at 168.50 for 100 shares of BYND here. I'd like more than 100 shares, but this will at least get my feet wet. So get 168.50 for, for my opening allotment. Well, that was a pretty weak break to the upside. Moving that up to 169 now. So 169, my first uh, attempted entry point here. Again, I want more than 100, but this will at least help me get established in the position. And look at that, would have nailed the top. There's hindsight again. Now, granted, I don't know if I would have actually gotten shares. That doesn't mean I would have been filled at 168.50, but there was the top right there. What is the low of that? Low 167.25. So 167.25 actually looks like an interesting area, but I also need to go and adjust this now to 169.50. So we'll see if it can get up to that area or not. I will go ahead and pause. All right, right now I have a couple of orders out there, fishing orders, so bobbers in the water. So if either of those turn to green, that means I've been filled. Uh, currently watching BYND uh, with an order at 170.50 to go short, but also have an order, if you're not familiar with my screen down there, on FSLY to try to go short at 98.50. But just a question of, are any of those gonna move up enough to ultimately get me filled? So let's go check on FSLY real quick. Looking like that might come into play here. There we go, there's the break. Can it get up to 98.15, or excuse me, 98.50. Again, I want more than 100 shares, but this would help me get my feet wet on it. There we go, got filled. So in for my first 100 there at 98.50. We'll see what this wants to ultimately do. And just, oh, look at this. Really, it gave me 42 shares out of the 100 that I wanted. So it's gonna be one of these, huh? All right, so I officially have 58 shares left. 
Wow. All right, there we go. All out. That's a, a little bit of a warning sign there about how this one may be wanting to play ball. <laughs> when it, when something fills you 42 shares, uh, a, a little sketchy in that regard. Now, again, I wanted more than 100, but I'm not going to turn down, uh, you know, that sort of 35 cent movement in my favor. So taking what the market was willing to give me there. So again, yeah, I would have liked to have gotten up to, uh, you know, way more than 100 shares, but was just looking to scale in. Uh, let's see, let's do that again at 99.50. I will keep in mind though, that can be a, a tough, tough exit. So again, have an order to for 100 shares. I want more than 100, but if this thing wants, like I said, just give me a, a quick movement in my favor, then I'm just gonna take it. I kind of equate it to if I was walking down the street and I saw a $35 bill, and I realized there's no such thing as a $35 bill, but if I saw one just sitting on the street, would I spend, you know, a minute, like, and that trade was even less than a minute, but would I spend a minute picking it up? And yes, me personally, I would. Now, if it's if it's Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, no, they probably wouldn't want to bother taking, you know, spending a minute to pick up thirty-five dollars. But for me, I'll, I'll I'll take a minute to pick up thirty-five dollars while this thing just continues to grind. So again, next first order up there at ninety-nine fifty, and we'll see if the price can get up there or not. Have an order up at 171.25 here on BYND for 100 shares to go short. As I've been saying for this strategy, I would like more than 100 shares, but this will at least get my feet wet. Well, I was hoping for more of a bigger move out with the break of 170, but it gets up there through 170 and then basically momentum just disappears. So I'm not willing to quite give up on it yet, but I'm definitely looking for a relatively fast move up to the 170 one mark and then above it. But yeah, just watching the level twos here, watching that number, 170 doesn't quite seem to want to disappear. There, eh, see what I mean? It disappeared for a second, but then that fast back down below it. So yeah, 170 definitely currently presenting a problem. There we go, now getting a little bit of momentum through it. Um, and that, yeah, 170, definitely, definitely a very stubborn level right now. So, all right, I'll go ahead and pause. All right, I'm looking for a short here at 168.50. In there, I think this uh, that fake breakout that we just watched of 170 is gonna uh, freak out some shorts here, or excuse me, freak out some longs, cause them to sell and push this price down. Because they were just watching the breakout, they were wanting the breakout, they didn't get the breakout and now the price is pulled back. So in my mind, a lot of those longs will be waving the white flag here and pushing the price down. So let's see what it wants to do. And I'm in at 168.50. What is the low of that 169? I'm gonna add if it comes back down to 169 and looks like it wants to push through there because that would be another failed bounce here. But it's gotta come down to 169 first. Because who knows, maybe, maybe I got suckered in. Maybe the longs will have the last laugh, we'll see. Again, watching 169 right now to see if it wants to come back down, which would imply a failed bounce. So if it looks like it wants to get down to 169 and then break below it, I would be interested in adding another 100 shares. So watching very closely. See if it wants to come back down. Well, I don't know, maybe I just got suckered in. Because this thing is not, let's see what is that low? Yeah, 169.25 ish. Not want to wave the white flag quite yet, but yeah, if this thing gets down to the 169.25-ish now, 
area I will look to add. Let's see if it wants to pull back here. Okay, in at 169.24. So have, whoops. Have 200 shares average of 168.87. Now let's see if this thing finally does want to roll back over here. Or like I said, maybe it just suckered me in for some more. Like I said, maybe the longs are gonna have the last laugh here. Let's see what it wants to do. One sixty nine, yeah, one sixty nine. Definitely the key break. It's got to push down through there. If it can, then I, I like the chances that I have a, a chance to get a profitable trade here. But as of now, that one sixty nine area, very stubborn. What is the low of that? Yeah. You know, I may, I'm thinking about even maybe adding again now if it wants to come back down to that area because that would imply that this bounce here has yet been another failed bounce. You got to think one of these will finally plunge it to the downside. But again, 169, just stubborn. Price gets down there and then just stops. There we go. Got to break down through it. And that was very short-lived. Trying to push down through it some more. Well, it took some off down there just because I'm not quite getting the push that I wanted to see, but I don't want to quite give up on it fully yet. Can it get, there we go. Whoops. All right, well, that was supposed to have been changed to 50. If you watch any of my past videos, you know that I like to scale out from 100 down to 50, uh, but forgot to do that. I think because I was a little, in the back of my mind, I was a little upset at myself because I never added. Remember, I, I said I, I wanna add another, so I was thinking that I still, you know, wanted to have 300 shares. I did not have 300 shares, uh, but, it is what it is, um, and yeah, I played that one right. I held through it. Well, I take that back. I, I, I talked the talk, right? Okay, I should probably add another 100 if it comes back down. And it did come back down. I did not add another 100. And you know, it's just an example of, listen, I, I, you just witnessed there where one mistake can somehow bleed into your other trading and that mistake of me not adding then caused me to be a little bit upset and I'm thinking, to myself while I'm trying to talk to you. Um, and no, I, I get it, this sounds like excuse. It's not an excuse, it's totally my fault. I'm just saying, you're not alone if, and, you, and learn from that, right? Just because you make one mistake, don't let that mistake turn into something else, which just happened to me. Fully my fault, um, but just be aware. If it happens to you, that's all right, it happens to everybody. I'm not gonna try to hide it. I'll be transparent about that, that it definitely happens to me, you just witnessed it there. But just realize that, if you, you wanted to have done something and you're like, oh, I, I wanted to do that, I missed it, just get over it. Get over it and stay focused on the trade because as you're seeing here, uh, this trade has continued to go in my favor. Uh, so, you know, a good little solid learning lesson um, on that point. But uh, depending, I guess, on when you've been watching the videos, uh, very recently, as of basically the past month-ish, uh, I've been aiming to be done by 30 minutes. Um, I trade for the freedom of, uh, you know, I, I don't trade for Rolex watches or fancy cars. Now, if that's why you want to get into trading, if that's why you're trading, cool, go for it. Whatever, whatever you want to do it for me, it's freedom of time. And I've really been enjoying, hey, you know, what can I do within 30 minutes? And then I can just move on with my day after 30 minutes. Um, and it's 10.05, so 35 minutes in. And I'll take it, $226, especially when it was a relatively bumpy morning. Uh, but overall, I'm happy, I'm pleased with it. Um, hindsight, yeah, it got me on Tesla, but I still feel 100%, I, I played Tesla the right way. Um, and you, I, I get it, that can sound bizarre. What do you mean you played it the right way? You lost money. I know, I know, but sometimes you lose money, but you, yet you still played things the right way. And then BYND, we just, I played that one the right way from a general perspective, but 
as a learning lesson was there. I, w I let one mistake bleed into me uh, not pressing the right buttons or forgetting to press the buttons. And all of a sudden I, I, I left profit on the table there. But all in all, that's, uh, I'll, I'll take it, not too bad for 30 minutes, $226. Now, if you are interested in getting those alerts that you saw throughout the, the course of the video, mainly at the beginning with the, the USEG uh, you know, breakout, then all you gotta do is go to claycharter.com forward slash team. Uh, the way the pricing works is we'll just use this model, $99, not per month, not per month, but for three months. So the question really just becomes if I invest the $99 to join, do I believe I can get at least $8.25, not per day, but per week of value, because that's what it breaks down to. So if you think you can get at least $8.25, per week of value, then you'll get a great return on your investment uh, by joining the subscription. If you, as far as this video is concerned, if you enjoyed it, if you would like for me to make more of these live trade videos, then a fast, time efficient way to communicate that to me, just hit that like button. Also comments, questions, suggestions, please leave those down below. And then finally, check out the channel as a whole. There's lots of other live trade videos, a good variety of educational videos. So check out the channel and hopefully you hit that subscribe button as I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. But if nothing else, just smash that like button and that'll communicate to me that you are enjoying these videos. So do that, and like I said, if you wanna trade alongside me, other quality traders, then consider joining my community. Take care, everybody, thanks for hanging out. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.